I've been nature journaling for seven years. When I say nature journaling can change your life, I'm being completely serious. It happened for me and perhaps it can happen for you too. This video is my story. I'll tell you how I found nature journaling, why I teach it now, and the many benefits that it can bring you if you decide to give it a try. So what is a nature journal? A nature journal is some combination of an artist's sketchbook, a naturalist's log, and a written journal of your time spent in nature. It can be any combination of these or just one or two of them. It can contain jottings, sketches, lists, maps, diagrams, prose, poetry, anything you can think of. The possibilities are limitless and they belong to you because above all, a nature journal is a record of your connection with the natural world. I recently read a scientific study led by researchers at the University of Derby in the UK. They showed that the relationship between humans and nature is failing and biodiversity loss and climate change are just indicators of this. They looked at factors such as affluence, urbanisation, reliance on technology and access to green space and compared this against well-being and a new index of nature connectedness. There are lots of ways to measure nature connectedness but the one that appeals to me and the one that they used in this study is a simple way of representing the relationship between nature and self. You see here on the left is a complete disconnect whereas here on the right is a diagram of complete integration. People are asked to choose which of these graphics best represents how they feel about their relationship with nature. I wonder where you are on this scale. I think my circles are very much overlapping and that's because I've been nature journaling for so long. I've been making a concerted regular effort to integrate myself with the natural world. Let me tell you about my journey into nature journaling. I was an academic, a researcher, working at a university in an urban part of the UK and studying and then teaching environmental science. I've always had a bit of an artistic background, but at the time of starting nature journaling, I was at the end of a bit of a hiatus and I hadn't really been drawing or painting very much for many years. I was struggling with anxiety and seasonal affective disorder, among other things. And the high pace of the urbanised southeast of England was really getting to me. So we decided to take freelance careers, a privilege I know, and moved to the rural southwest of the UK. Within a month of moving, I started my first nature journal. That was in 2016. I was very much inspired by Edith Holden's A Country Diary of an Edwardian Lady, which I was given as a gift by my grandmother. I didn't know what I was doing was called nature journaling. I had no idea about this name, and it wasn't until I joined social media several years later because I wanted to show my work, that I found that there's such a thriving community of nature journalers on Instagram, YouTube, Facebook and other platforms. In 2016, just after we moved, I took my nature journal and I pretty much just used it to explore the town that I found myself in and the surrounding countryside. I knew that I needed nature to heal me and I wanted to get to know nature better in return. When I started, I didn't know the names of many of the wetlands or coastal plants and birds that you find around here. But sketch by sketch over the years, I've built up a closer relationship with my local patch. So what do I think a nature journal has given me? Well, first of all, it's a safe space to start exploring art and writing about my relationship with nature. When you're out in nature, nobody's judging that experience. You don't have to make art to show and it doesn't matter if the art is bad. If you don't know what to write, you can make a list of all the things that you see. It doesn't matter if you don't know the name of that plant you just sketched or the bird you just spotted. Do that sketch, take a few notes, maybe take a photo to identify it later. In fact, that's better because out of all of these years making scruffy outdoor nature journals, what I've really been doing is teaching myself to observe. More than anything, I've learned to notice, notice little things that are unimportant to so many people, but really shouldn't be. Because it's those little things, those little changes in our patches day by day, that add up to the big things like the coming of spring. All that safe space practice might or might not inspire you creatively. Over the years, I've turned my outdoor scribbly books into detailed, intricate, artistic nature journals. And I change the topic of them year by year, and maybe sometimes every couple of years, just to keep it all fresh and experimental and fun. By keeping a nature journal, especially long term, 
you would have made yourself a space for that continued creative practice. And that can inspire some confidence because with lots of practice comes some proficiency in what you're doing, whether that's drawing, writing, identifying, or all of these things. You will have made space for continued creative reflection. And with that can come increased confidence, particularly over an extended period of time. For me, that increased confidence has led me here to YouTube, to Instagram, and to me standing up in front of classes online and offline to teach nature journaling too. I would never have had the confidence to do this if it hadn't been for years of gradually improving my work and putting myself out there. And also just generally the lovely nature journaling community online. I can't say my mental troubles have gone, but I have a toolkit now to address them. And some things like seasonal affective disorder are well in the background now. But getting out into nature regularly and really noticing those seasonal changes has put me into sync with it better. I'm not fighting it anymore. And for me, that has meant that I feel more integrated with those changes and more comfortable when they occur. I also think that making that relationship between ourselves and nature can benefit nature too. Looking back at that study by the researchers at the University of Derby, they talked about something called the extinction of nature experience. This extinction of nature experience is a case of shifting baseline in which the younger generations never get to find out what they've already lost. And they settle into a new normal that's governed by things like urbanization and technology access and the loss of access to green spaces. Keeping a nature journal and inspiring young people to start directly fights the extinction of nature experience. By giving people a chance to experience nature, even within the constraints of our depleted biodiversity. A nature experience can even be had in an urban area. And we all know that when you know something well, you're more likely to want to save it. So nature itself benefits indirectly from our engaging with it through nature journaling. Long-term nature journalers may be more inspired to take on volunteer conservation roles or citizen science projects, to do litter picking, monitoring, or perhaps even take up an environmental career. It certainly happened to me. I litter pick the beaches regularly now, and I'm involved in a monitoring project helping to look after our local rivers, which are severely polluted at the moment. I think that my engaging with these sorts of projects is a direct consequence of having my eyes open to my local patch and its stresses through regular nature journaling. Who are nature journalists then? We're the litter pickers, petition signers, protesters, monitors, conservation volunteers, people who love our local patches. All of this arises from a place of keen, usually solitary immersion with nature and self. So can nature journaling really change your life? I hope I've made a compelling case that it can. Personally, I feel that I'm proof of the fact that it can. And I know several people within the community who would say the same. I believe it so much that I'm willing to take that step and dedicate a chunk of my life to getting others inspired to go out and perhaps try nature journaling for themselves. Are you inspired? I hope so. I've got courses, I've got online workshops, I've got my Patreon. You can come and find me on Instagram. You can sign up to my newsletter and all of that. Or you can just go and type in nature journaling and find all sorts of wonderful information from people online. You can do all of that, but if you really want to start, all you need is a pencil and a sketchbook, a few moments to go outside and a good open mind. Be ready to step out the door and observe. And I really do believe that you'll be happy that you did.